Go over to Romans 13. So don't don't show up with a prophet hat or a apostle hat or a whatever hat. Amen. Nothing wrong with a hat, but I'm saying you get my point. So, oh, like I said, Romans 13. I was telling Caleb and I showed him these kids. Listen, there's all there's like a video and it has all these young people that are seniors that got all these invitations to go to different colleges. And if you don't think that's a big deal, it is a big deal. Because you're talking about a division one school that's about $50,000 a year. And you're talking about a four year ride. It's not just a four year ride. You're talking about food, you're talking about housing, and then you're talking about perks that you don't hear about that are there. Okay. So if you go to a division one known school, like in the SEC, the Big Ten, you go to Ohio, you go to Florida, you go to Florida State, you go to Boise, you go to Clemson, you go to North Carolina. You go to any Oklahoma, OU, LSU, Texas, Longhorns. You go to any, do you know what they have there? It's called alumni. And you know what alumni that go to those colleges that are, that are very successful do? <laughs> what? Many times people that come, let's say this guy's a quarterback and he's a freshman. You go and meet alumni ditters and people, are, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll, you know, I just I live over here. You know, I'm walking. And like, Don't worry about that, son. We'll have a vehicle for you. You think I'm kidding? That's how it works. OK, that's now they try to say that's illegal. But look, just there's a famous movie. Watch it. You know, there's many movies like that. So it's not just a, a fifty thousand dollar a year scholarship. You know, if there's a lot of other perks that come from those areas and then you're that much closer stepping into your career or what your vision is, what you want. If your desire is to be a professional athlete, you know, and it's not not everybody can make it to that level. Do you understand that? It and so what I was showing him was these one kids, Arizona, there's one kid from Arizona. He's going to OU. Uh, one kid that was in Georgia. He lives two blocks from University of Georgia. But he got uh, an invitation to go to OU on a full ride and then, uh, you know, or go to Florida or different or, or then they had these other kids that were from uh, low, uh, you know, like different parts of, you know, places that were getting offers to go places. And they all the whole point I'm saying to you is this one kid said, you know, I like Arizona. I like this environment. And I told Caleb right away, I noticed six or seven points. These are all applicable to you and I. Your environment is important. Do you understand that? A lot of people don't even have a clue. They think anywhere is all right. No, 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 no. Your environment is either helping you to grow or extracting from you from growing. Don't be deceived. That's why I told Caleb and his buddies. I said, show me who you hang around with. I'll show you who you are in the next 10 years. I will show you. Show me who you hang around with. And if you think faith is all about getting a house and a TV and a car, you're foolish. That ain't real faith, friend. Nothing wrong with that. But guys I work with, they're making $150,000, $200,000 a year in the trades. They own houses. They have nice trucks and they have jet skis and all these. Other so did they have any faith? No, no, they didn't. They just showed up to work every day. So that ain't got nothing to do with faith. I can go out and get a brand new Chevy truck today on credit. Is that faith? I don't know. If you call it so, maybe you have to have faith to pay the bill. But to me, I don't see that as faith that God's talking about. I think you need some faith to take that leap. But really, you know, and here are these points, these principles, because these are what you should be thinking about in your own life every day and reflecting on. So I told them environment. And I said, here's a problem. Many people don't understand that how important it is to be in the right environment spiritually. You know, and what people that are around who are either edifying you. We saw it in Mark chapter two this week. Those four friends. Come on now. Are we here this morning? I'm not mad at you. I'm, I'm ready to speak now. The Holy Ghost got something to lay down. Amen. He had four friends that said, we need to get you into the right environment. Because in that environment, you're going to experience emancipation, growth, freedom, 
liberty, restoration. Come on, healing. Come on, you're gonna. We're gonna help bring you into the right environment. So this kid said that. Then this kid said, you know, and then he then he pulls his shirt down, and he's like, see, he's like this. I got this tattoo right here, Proverbs three, five, and six. And the kid, just naturally speaking, his dad's uh, a black, the mom's white. He he kind of looks albino. It looks weird. But man, the kid, you see, you can't judge a book by the cover. The kid, but his work ethic, and then I say, see, there you go, Caleb. See, and when he has all these interviews, everybody's talking about, wow, he, he can run and throw on the run, his hips, his arms extension. I said, <laughs> that's, that's. Wear a mask, six feet apart, and good hygiene. That's natural. The arm, the, that matters to the scout. They can't really see that. That's not what's making it work all the way. What's making it work is the mentality and attitude is I keep myself in the right environment. I, I have faith in God. I honor and value my parents. He goes, I have my mom and my sister's name tattooed right here as well. Because there's the two important people in my two most two important women in my life, and I'm gonna get my dad up here. So to me, he's speaking and telling you what's working in here that's producing right here. But if you're a scout, you you can't see in there. You're only seeing here. That's what you see. But that's not what I see or hear. I I, I tend to hear other things. I'm showing Caleb. That's that's what's making this man work right here. And then they show him working out. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm at the gym six days a week." And then they show one of his trainers and this. See, and people think, "Oh man, they're making too much of kids." See how much they do all this. Yeah, you're an idiot. These people are idiots. No, you're not. This kid is being honed. Oh, people just pay too much of sports. They pay too much for a psychologist me, 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 that don't do nothing for you anyway, but mess your own mind up. They pay too much to Mark Zuckerberg. Get it? It ain't too much. That kid is honing his craft, preparing himself to enter into a great university and potentially head to the NFL. People, sports is overrated and this art's overrated. I can show you a bunch of Van Gogh pictures that you look at and you go, big deal. It's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? I've been to the Louvre two times. <laughs> I can tell you, I don't want to go to a lot of places in life, but that was one of them. And I've been there twice. So the reality, this kid is crafting at home. Then he shows another kid. Same thing. Worked with his dad, faith in God, valuing the mother and father, great work ethic, proper environment. And then I said to Caleb, are they going to the Grove? And I said, did you notice in any of these articles their interviews, there's a whole bunch of these kids going all, the, I said, they never once said they had a girlfriend. You don't have time for a girlfriend when you want to go to OU or LSU or Clemson. You don't have time for a girlfriend right now. You don't have time to play, get it? There's no time for social. You can have it in a general way. There's time to hit the books. You get it? There's time to get in the word. It's time to stay focused in this critical hour. You want to move into the major leagues in your faith. It's not too late, no matter how old you are. It's not too late. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. It's not too late. You just need to be put in the right environment. Amen? And you might need some friends that bring you there, some faith friends, not some hokey-doke church-going friends that just want to go to church. They just want to have, you know, organized religion. You need friends that want to help you grow in your faith so that you can fight the good fight of faith, that you're a distributor, kind of like what Rich said, at work, I'm going to be able to. Me, I'm already exposing myself at work. With your faith. Because you can't hide who you are. Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. But those opportune moments will arise. Amen. And you'll be able to, you'll be able to perhaps 
realize that the greatest the greatest asset you have in life is is the gift of Christ in you to share. And that's how your faith is going to grow. Amen. Your life is going to be enhanced by the beauty of sharing your relationship of who he is in you. What he's done for you and what he's going to continue to do. So like I was telling him and you see all these these youngsters in these videos. And I said, do you notice the common thread? How is it? They, they don't even know each other. And then they had this one kid and he was straight out of New York City, man. Like he's like, yeah, little Jamaica, and this is a dangerous. And you could just see the difference. I might show you guys the video after. He had like a street mentality. And he's talking about the divorce that happened in his life, how he had him and his dad had a couch surf and blah, 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 blah. And he wants to make it. And he's like a top recruit right now. And, you know, and even that kid, you didn't see him with no girls or goofing around. You just see the work ethic, man, on these. And I said, see, the reality is this. I said, and what do you hear from all these, also all these kids that are being recruited? I'm not, I don't, I, I know I'm not where I want to be. See, you guys don't real. Just that statement alone will, will open you up to a move of the Holy Ghost. It's like Brother Mark's dad told him, the Holy Ghost don't talk to smart people. The Holy Ghost, you know what I mean? When you're too smart and you know it all, the Holy Ghost won't speak to you because you already know everything. You're not open to him taking you to that next level. Oh, and the other thing that was important is what they said. This one guy who's a quarterback, he said, I can't wait to get to the school. Oh, you, they have a tremendous record of producing elite quarterbacks, the coach. What he said, see, and I said, Caleb, that's amazing. Didn't you hear what that man said? See, inside of every man or woman, there is a pursuit, should be a pursuit of excellence. Is it cold in here? It's a little bit, huh? Must find not a lower level, but a higher level. See, you already know what you know. You're not looking for someone below you, immature, less knowledge, less understanding. You're look and that's what this guy says. I can't wait to get to that school so I can learn from that coach. See, because I'm not where I should be or where I want to be, he said. Because where I, that's what I told him. But it's like I told this father yesterday. I said to him, I said, his kid goes to Sega Heart Cathedral. It's about $27,000 a year or 25, they're 25,000 a year. And I said, I said, well, you know what the problem is with a lot of people? And some of these coaches don't even recognize it. For some people, it's like, you taught him everything he knows as a father. High schools, they'll get a little more knowledge, but it's really until they get to college that they get the college coaching, that they really start learning things. You know what I mean? But everything you've taught them up to that point, up till eighth, ninth grade, you have to turn them over then because they're not little kids. You still work with them, but improve. How many understand? So this kid's valued higher mentorship and leadership v high price on it because to get to, to get where you go you can't get there on your own just you and the holy spirit doesn't work like that that's why god gave apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry so that the body grows you can't get to where you want just you and god don't work like that how many of you know that praise the lord all right, going on. And so I was just sharing these principles because environment's important. Vision is important. How many of you understand? Scripture tells us in Proverbs, where there's no vision, the people are what? Destroyed or perish. And actually the Amplify says where there's no progressive vision. How many of you know the Lord's always expanding on the vision you have because you have limited knowledge. Do you know that? We know in part. Come on now. You know in part. Now, religious people go, see, you know in part. You'll never know it all. You know in part presently. 
but the Lord, if you're walking with him, he'll continue to take you from glory to glory. That's why you even pray in Colossians, that prayer, that you be filled with the knowledge of his will, right? And that actually says that you increase in knowledge, right? Colossians 1.10, increase in knowledge. Then you increase If you increase in knowledge, right? Let's look at it real quick. Hold that place over there in uh, Romans 13. Just look at Colossians in the Amplified with me real quick. And then we'll get to where we got to go. Look it. We got till 12, so make it count. Verse 9, for this reason, since the day we heard it, cease not to make a special request, praying that you be filled with the deep, clear knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God and understanding and discernment of spiritual things that you walk, live and conduct yourself fully pleasing to him in all things, bearing fruit, increasing in knowledge. And then what? You had to amplify it. increasing in knowledge. And then what? Increasing in knowledge. Then what? Think about it. If you increase in knowledge, now you have a new, you have a new um, information base of knowledge, right? And you take that knowledge, and what do you do with that knowledge? You put it on a shelf and just go, "Hey, got me a bucket of knowledge." You use it, so you can get all the knowledge you want. Knowledge has to be what? Or we could say acted upon. So what, what this says is, I was waiting for you guys to figure it out, but it's right there. But here you go. Here's the part I want you to see. You increase in knowledge, and then you, in, you increase in knowledge, but then you increase in life because of knowledge acted on. You kind of, kind of got to reflect on it a little bit before it really dawns on you. Increase in knowledge is just information and understanding of things. But then when you act on that knowledge, you will increase in life all across the board because of that revelation knowledge. Amen. So knowledge gets you a certain place, but knowledge, revelation knowledge acted on will create a enlargement and an increase in your life. And so you and I haven't yet experienced the fullness of what God has planned for us. It tells you, I and see, all, ear and heard, all that God has prepared, Amplified says, made and keeps ready. So it's waiting. It's waiting until you take the knowledge you have, act on that knowledge, and move forward. The path of the righteous is like a bright light getting brighter and brighter. The more you move towards Him, amen the more knowledge is released on the inside of you, the more clarity you begin to see clearly. That's why he says, pray that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, opened, illuminated. We should turn the heater on in here. So much of fire up the heater. It is, it is chilly in here. I can feel it on my hands. Okay, now go to Romans now. Romans, we'll get back to just a couple little principles. Come on, so you got to increase in you know, I was driving, leaving where I work at the other day. I was leaving the, the over there at the Davies Hospital. And man, I don't know if you've ever driven out of there and you go right above those hills. And, and I mean, there's some amazing houses up there. I'm, I'm serious, some very big ones. And I'm thinking, I, I'm just thinking. I'm like, man, a lot of them people that live in them homes are ungodly. A lot of the people that live in some of them very large, I'm saying. So you know that the Lord didn't just, you know, sometimes wealth is passed on through generations or whatever. Who knows? But my point is, I'm saying is the Lord don't want some unrighteous sinner having something and you not. Come on now. So you have to enlarge your, your knowledge, right, to be able to obtain what God has for you. Because what's available to you is unlimited, but your limited faith, which is due to a limited thinking and due to limited knowledge, right, will keep you limited. 
So if you can't see yourself, I'm not saying that's your pursuit, but what I'm saying is it's possible. Like matter of fact, Rich was telling me yesterday that the company he works for uh, makes people managers and then they, they give them, and I, I already knew what they did, but he told me is they, uh, you know, after a person worked there, he's telling me the guy that opened up his own store had only been working for him for how much time? Not even a year. And he's opening up his own grocery warehouse or whatever. So the company gives you a loan and how many, you know, I mean, you want to be in that position, you know? So if I'm in Rich's shoes, I'm not kissing up because that's the way the natural man does it. Natural man's a little kiss up. He's a little networker. You know what I mean? The natural man's always smooching. You know, that's what we call smooching, networking. The world calls it, you know, that's the natural way of doing things trying to please man, but that ain't the real you, right? So, so if you let the favor of God bless you and enlarge you, he opens up the opportunities for you. How many of you understand? You and I, the battle ain't ours, but I'll tell you this, the only part we have to do is we got to get knowledge, got to act on that knowledge. We got to speak that truth out into our lives and we got to walk in the light of what he's already given us. See, you know, it's like the other day. Here's a good example. And I, I told the guy at work, I was like, yeah, I'm negligent. Like I told you guys the other day about, and, it, and someone says, oh, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Lord told me, uh, matter of fact, I was talking to Eric and he was telling me about, you know, he's like, hey, dude, get in on this stock thing. You'll get, they'll give you a free stock. And I was like, yeah. And I was telling him about stocks. And there's a guy that uh, knew Brother Hagen. And, he used to pray in tongues every day for one hour. And the Lord would tell him what stocks and what companies to invest in. And he became a millionaire. And back then, that was a lot of money. And I would say this, that if you develop a lifestyle of praying first, that God can give you direction and understanding on what to invest in. That's why I was telling Eric. But a lot of times people just, because what he told me, he said, well, I kind of just follow Warren Buffett and his model and I was like that's good but bro why follow Warren when you the Lord will tell you come on down but see you have to have knowledge of natural things first you gotta have knowledge of the stock market so you gotta study you gotta understand how some of these things work but if once you have that knowledge and you bring it to the Lord in prayer pakasantata enlarge me Lord show me what to invest in direct me see he knows he that's what that one gentleman did and and god made him a millionaire so i was the other day talking to this guy at work and eric had told me it was a couple weeks back i opened up this little account in the stock i didn't put nothing in it but i was like okay i'm gonna do it but you gotta sit me down and help me walk through this real quick and i'm just gonna start see it's the second time now i told you about that guy i was working with that young young brother who left work, he walked off his job, making 45 bucks, 46, 50 bucks an hour. He's like, no, nah, man, I gotta do my stock. Sorry, man, I'm out of here. He was like killing it. He made like 80 grand in like a month during the pandemic. And he's like, come on, Dave, just put a hundred in there. And it was like, he said what I was thinking, serious. So the Lord was speaking through him. He was cool, he was from Charleston, North Carolina. Young dude, I go, do you have experience? He goes, nope. I just started doing some reading and just went for it. And so what I was saying is the other day, what I'm trying to tell you is knowledge. Then you got to act on your knowledge. So the other, it was a couple of weeks ago, Eric was telling me, hey man, you know this little thing called doggy coin? He's like, dude, it's like a half cent, but I've been in, I've been investing in it. He's like, I've been investing in it. And I'm like, okay. Well, then it jumped up a little bit. And then I was just looking on, I wasn't even looking at that stuff. I was looking at something else. And I saw this article that this guy wrote and he said, doggy coin is a great investment. It's going to be going up very soon this was a couple weeks ago and i was like i took that article i sent it to eric and i held it. i go okay i'm gonna act on that i'm sensing that that this is something good i sensed it by the holy ghost and then i never acted on it i got caught up with the cares of the life ages of anxieties different things that i gotta do well you know on friday that sucker went up to 50 cents from a half a cent to 50 cents a share That quick. 
So if you had bought like just a thousand dollars worth of that little doggy coin, and all of a sudden it went to 50 cents, what's that working out to be? 50 grand or something? What is that? If you had a thousand dollars worth and it was a half a cent per share, and then all of a sudden it goes up to 50 cents a share, what's that? Come on. One of you mathematicians. Thousand dollars invested, it's a half a cent per share, and then it rose to like 50 cents. Huh? Would that be 50,000 or 500,000? 50.50 times a thousand, right? If you invested a thousand, it's 24,000. 24,000 a week or a day is pretty cool. I mean, they were saying that a guy had invested a thousand in 2007 or not, not 2000 when it first came out, he'd have like a million something now. So I'm just saying, the Lord knows where to take you. Now, to my detriment, not acting on knowledge. And you can tell yourself all kinds of choices. I ain't got time. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. I ain't. That's a lie. You got time. I had time. I didn't act on it. So knowledge, knowledge is costly, isn't it? Lack of knowledge is expensive. And so it's not acting on knowledge. So it's not that God doesn't give us opportunities. It's just sometimes those opportunities aren't acted on. Many opportunities you get. I'm telling you now. I have many opportunities. You got to listen, but you got to, you'll learn. You just got to pray, Lord, help me not miss it no more. <laughs> you know, God, help me not be thick headed and dull. And that's how I pray. Because when you see an, an opportunity God gives you, and you don't act on it. You can't just dismiss and go, oh, well, no, you got to repent of that thing, man. You got to say, man, that, that's dull and insensitive, Lord. And that ain't right. Forgive me. You gave me opportunity. I prayed. I've been believing for money. You gave me an opportunity and I didn't act on it. Well, what are you going to do? Blame it on God? You can't blame it on nobody else. You got to take responsibility, repent for it, and correct it and not do the same thing again, hopefully. Amen? And beg for it, not beg, but believe God for almost like begging, though. You know what I mean? It's almost like begging, saying, Lord, give me another opportunity. Give me another chance. It's, it's almost like begging, but it's not. It's crying out in faith. Amen. That's all it is, is, is asking in faith, you know, and that's for anybody in here because everybody in here got a hundred bucks. It's just, do you want to put a little time in studying? Do you want to pray in tongues for an hour a day? And do you really want God to do it? Or, or are you more comfortable in just working it out in your own flesh? Just saying. Me, I got a decent job, but I don't want to do that job for the rest of my life. I don't. Something in me does not allow me to just be a little worker bee. I, I wish I could tell you that, that that's not me. I try to be a little worker bee, but it don't work like that for me. Because I'm in a five-fold ministry. Do you understand? And I go to work. I do a great job. Matter of fact, the guy the other day said, man, we got a lot more done with Dave here this week. Of course, they tried me, tested me, proved me for the last two weeks, you know. But the reality is, is, you know, I already told them, man, I'll be here at work. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I show up. And, of course, I work in a, in a hospital. So imagine the COVID restrictions, you know, people in elevators and, you know, and just, you know. Anyway, all right, we better hurry up and get in this word, this scripture right here. Let's go. Put on that mask, amen? See, the world's defense mechanism, one of them is a mask. But for you, you need to get clothed up in Christ. You need to put it on. Come on, man. The covering, and, it, and it's not something, just because you're a Christian does not mean you put on your armor, friend. You know, women, 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 just because you go to bed didn't mean Tomorrow morning, when you jumped out of the bed, your makeup found its way on your face. Does it? Does it? No, it don't. 
You need to walk over to that, what do you guys call them, vanities or whatever, and you need to appropriate whatever you feel you need to appropriate. It didn't just get on you. These clothes didn't get on me this morning. I didn't just stand up and, they, and, I, and I just, the shirt came out of the closet. I stretched my arms out. It went on me and then it just dropped. It don't work like that. I had to put it on. Well, see, what makes you think you can just wake up and you're going to be active, energized, and, and have put on your armor, friend? What makes you think that? But you didn't choose to actively put on the new man today. It doesn't work like that, does it? A lot of believers just, well, I'm a believer. But yeah, they're defaulted to the natural because they didn't make an active decision to put on the new man. They didn't make a decision to say, this is the day the Lord's made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father. Your mercies are new every morning. Yesterday's passed away, forever's before me. But I thank you that your mercies are new today because you might have had a challenging day yesterday. So did you affirm that so that you can clean the slate? You got to put on. And I'll tell you this. Let me go to Romans, Romans 13. You know how many times the word tells you to put on? Lots. Tells you lots of times to put on. Here you go, Romans 13. Romans 13. Verse 11. Besides this, I'm going to read from the Amplified. You know what a critical hour this is, how that it is high time. What does high time mean? You know what high time is? How many of you know about the OK Corral? How many are familiar with the OK Corral? It's high time. It's a showdown. It's time to meet. This is it. I mean, we're in a high time right now in the world. You need just enough information to keep you abridged of what's going on in the world. You need just enough. I'm talking about around the world. I'm not talking about America, so to speak. I'm not concerned about America, so to speak. But you need to know what's going on in other foreign countries as it relates to America. Like America pulling out of Afghanistan, China, Iran, and Russia, trade, where what you, uh, European Union and and their connection with China, the trade things that are those all affect jobs in America. Do you understand? You, so you just need to have enough of that information. You know, those all affect the stock markets, which ultimately affects big companies and things as such. Just enough information. So it says, right here, it's high time. Now for you to wake up out of your sleep, rouse to reality. Salvation is and final deliverance is nearer to us now than when we first believed and trusted and relied on Christ. The night is gone. The day is almost here. Fling away the works and deeds of darkness. Put on the full armor of light. Notice it said, put on. The full armor of light. I got some. Uh, put on. the. What does the full armor of light look like? When we talk about light, what are we talking about? We're talking about revelation. The light is Jesus. The light of redemption. The reality of G what Jesus has done for you, who he is in you, and what he's given you. The armor of light. It says it, uh, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship. But, but here's what I like to amplify. Amplified says this. We have true unbroken fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins all sin in every form and manifestation sins of the heart sin that produces man do you understand look there's a lot of Christians that go to church but they're not believers meaning they go to church and they might be born again but 
They're not actively walking in faith. Do you understand? That's a sin. No, no, listen. See, we, we've learned to uh, condition people to think that sin was the guy out there fornicating, the, the, the person out there getting drunk or doing drugs or, or, or all the other external things, which are byproducts of a sinful heart. They are. But we don't like to acknowledge that Hebrews 3 says the sin of unbelief of the heart, the doubter. Scripture tells you, he that knows to do good and doesn't do it, it's a sin. Anything that's not a faith, it's a sin. That's why I just told you, if the Lord prompted, see, a lot of people couldn't even see that. If the Lord meets your need, gives you revelation and understanding, a way out of something, and you didn't act on it, it's a sin. It's a sin. Why is it a sin? Because you didn't trust him. Or you didn't value what was given to you. You think I'm kidding? Go look at Esau. He didn't value his birthright and he traded it. And then when he saw the reality of what he missed out on, he went back crying for it and couldn't get it back. Do you understand? He sought it hard with tears, but he never sought it with repentance. You have, do you understand what I'm saying? Repentance means I'm not going to make that mistake again. And how many of you, you and I have made the same repetitious mistake? We don't like to say that. See, church people don't like to say, they don't like to say, well, I was dull. Because everybody wants to, I'm just a spiritual faith giant. Everybody wants to act. I'm not saying us. I'm saying just in church world in America. Everybody wants to act how they're so faithful. But like I said, during the pandemic, we saw what was faithful. The veneer was stripped, friend. We saw the big mega churches shut down. That taught healing for 10 years. Now, I'm, hold on a sec. If you believe in healing... You taught this and you got healing school and you got all these things and then a pandemic hits. You weren't moved. But if, if you allowed the outward things, even government, government can't shut the church down. They didn't shut down the grocery store. I mean, you say, well, that's unrealistic. Go to China. They shut them down. They say, you don't come out of your house. <laughs> To go look, go, you know, they were back in school like three months later. While American kids are sitting there playing video games and they can't even bring the kids back. Don't be fooled. Don't go, oh, that's just, man, are you silly? The children in America today are going to struggle. The teachers are giving them passes. Some kids don't even check in on the internet. That's the next generation, friend. And if you're not concerned about that, then you're selfish. Because the, re the, the reality is, the reality is, the reality is, is China went back to school right away. So did a lot of other nations. Why did America not go back to school? They're going back to school now, but guess what? They're going, hold on. They're going back to school this week, but they get out in another month. <laughs> So, you know, we got some different issues here going on. But what I'm saying is this has to get down to, we can kill that heater now with putting on the new man. See, I think a lot of people just go to church and they kind of just cruise with Jesus. You get what I'm saying? Jesus take the wheel. They're not actively engaged. They're kind of in the backseat of the, the Christian limousine while Jesus is driving. And they're just like, Jesus got this. And Jesus is like, no, I want you to engage while I'm driving. And they're like, having conversations amongst themselves. And Jesus is like, yo, up here. And Jesus, he wants intimacy. He wants communion. He wants fellowship. But I think a lot of Christians were more concerned about great music and worship and having a good time and having fun at church. Fun. You know, here's a good thing. A lot of people, 
a lot of people in professional athletics, they go, they go like this. They go, you know, when, when kids are playing sports, you have so many, you have different mentalities in different ways. And some coaches are all about, you know, usually they're not, they're not training up great leaders. <laughs> they always go, let the kids have fun, fun. When you're too competitive, it just kills all the fun. <laughs> and then you got the other camp that's just hard driven. They're all about winning. They're the dub. Get the dub at all costs, you know? And so you, you have these imbalanced perspectives. You know, like me, when I did little coaching, I never taught the dub. I believe the dub is a byproduct of winning inside. That's what I taught. I always won. That's the truth. I had good success. Because teach the internal things first. Have the right order. The W outside will follow. Always, always. I can show you the trophies in the pictures. Just like this guy at work. He, every time he says something, I go, oh, yeah. I was like, he goes, come on, man. And Because he's around guys that lie. He's around people. There's a lot of liars that make stories up. Do you know that? I'll tell you this story. The other day, there's this guy, and I mean, God bless him. He's a big old, looks like a country guy. I mean, he's not nowhere near the best looking dude at all. And he told me and uh, this guy Friday, and he's like, <laughs> I said, and I'm not wasn't being mean. I said, I'm gonna show you something. I said, see that guy? He ain't married. He ain't married. He ain't got no kids. And he just looked at me like, come on, man. Come, come on, bro. You know, he's the forbid. He's like, come on. And then I was like, no, serious. And then he comes back, and then he starts questioning him. And he's like, no, I'm not married. Got no kids. Too old for that. But he goes, you know, when I worked for Lockheed and whatever it's called up in Las Vegas area, Lockheed and I, what's the name of it? The famous company, like McDonnell Douglas, Lockheed, huh? No, Lockheed and whatever. Come on, you guys know it. It's a great American. Lockheed Martin. Thank you. He said he walked. Okay. He said, all right. You get my point. <laughs> he worked at Lockheed Martin. That's all I was looking for is the name. And he's like, you know, when I worked up in Las Vegas, and he goes, you know, I always had a lot of ladies. He's like, they fly in from everywhere in Vegas. You know what's in Vegas? What what's here in Vegas stays in Vegas. And he's like, here's how I would do it. And he told this story about, he goes, yeah, I didn't tell him I was a homegrown, of course, because, you know, nobody coming in, you know, they all had boyfriends and they wanted to, you know, have fun in Vegas. So he gives us this whole story of how basically the guy was like, and I was like, so you're telling me, and the guy, man, I mean, he's like, yay big, that big of feet. I mean, just not even a good look at, I mean, just like, I'm not, I don't want to be critical, but, and I'm thinking, what young lady is going to be wanting that? <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, well, yeah, but the guy, he, you, when, when uh, this is live, if a person ever sees it, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but even the way a person dresses tells you, you know, their, their tastes. So my point is, is, so when he walked away, I just looked at that other guy and I was like, wow, bro, people really do tell stories in the union. Everybody's got stories that they just, I said, so I'd be telling them stories and, and he goes, oh man. And I'm like, okay, I'll pull out my book of lies again. Look. So I clown him like book of Eli. I was like, here's my book of lies, but I'm being sarcastic because I was like, yeah, I've been to the Louvre. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was over in this other place. And, and I was like, here, let me give you a book of lie again. So I can't remember. I was just telling, because by the grace of God, I've had some experiences around the world in different places with, you know, all, I was like, yeah, I went to the World Series. And, and uh, he's like, nah, yeah. he's like, you, you think you know something about everything? It's like, I've been to the World Series two times. I can't, you know, I've been to just all kind of stuff that I was we were because he was talking to this other electrician about Giants. I was like, yeah, I was a Giants ticket holder up till last year for like like ten seasons. I was, I was a Giants season ticket holder. I had lower box seat, and I had upper seats too. I, I don't tell anyone that, but I was I turned it over last year, and I was telling him 
Uh, and and for he's like, oh, come on, man, he, he thinks it's a joke. Like I'm lying. It's like I'm not lying. Uh, and I don't say that to him. I go here, check out my book of lies. Look at that picture. <laughs> because he hears a lot of lies, so people don't really know what to believe in life. But see, the blessing of God gives you all kind of entrance ways into different things in life. The blessing of the Lord. God opens up those things. But you and I got to put on God on a daily basis. Because it's you walking in him that opens up the blessings. Now, a lot of other people have to do things, but they got to work hard for it. Like I told you, even last year, it was like I was, I was talking to this thing and the, the person from the Johnson, they're like, they text me back. They're like, hey, are you going to sell your seat? And I was like, I don't own that seat. She's like, yeah, you own it. I was like, no, I never bought it. I, 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 she's like, no, you're the, you're the, um, what do you call them? You have the, you own it. Like owning a home, you have to own the seat. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. But I just said it. So you have to own the seat. You can't just go buy. You can buy a ticket, but you can't have the season tickets. You have to own the seat in certain sections of the stadium. She's like, you own it. I was like, no, I didn't buy it. She's like, yes, you did, sir. I have it right here, documented. I'm like, no, I never bought it. I never bought it. I'm telling you. I bought the season tickets. Maybe they, somehow, they said I own those two seats. I was the, I was the, but see, during the pandemic and the lapse, it was impossible to sell the seats. So I just was like, by then I was just emotional. I was like, whatever. <laughs> I just let it lapse. I didn't even try to put it on the market because they were down, you know, and you're not going to, you know, it's a waste of time. But the blessing of God opens up things. Maybe a computer glitch. I don't know. But I'm telling you to go buy a seat because I was going to buy a seat one year. Just to buy one seat was like uh, like $7,000. You have to buy the seat. That's not the ticket. Do you understand? That's the, the, the to own the seat. That's one seat. They have other seats for like 100 grand. You know, if you want to own a, one of those boxes up in there, the suites, those cost, you know. But I don't know. So anyway, look at this. He says, let us conduct ourselves honorably, verse 13. I'm going to hurry up. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becoming as in the open day of light, not in reveling, drunkenness, debauchery, but put on the Lord Jesus. Now, people think put on. What does Jesus mean to a lot of people? Let's keep it real. What does Jesus mean to a lot of people? To some people, they're just like, lovey, 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 lovey. To some people, Jesus is the opposer of religion and sin. There's so many. Jesus means a lot to a lot of different Christians. Do you understand that? But to, when he says put on the Lord Jesus, what he's saying is put on the fullness of him. Don't just put on an aspect of him. That's where Christians fail. They only put on one aspect. See, they'll put on such love. They think that dismissing sin is okay. It's not. And some are so hardcore with preaching sin that there's no love, there's no mercy, there's no grace. You get what I'm saying? So you and I are, are to put on the fullness of Jesus, you know? It's like, stand up here. It's like, brother, let me, let me help you out of that problem and that dilemma. Let me, let me walk you out of that. Because God loves you and I love you, you know, but... You know, don't don't keep going back to that because that's going to devour your life, brother. That's going to steal your intimacy with him. That's going to keep man. He forgives you, bro. I'm going to pray with you. He cleanses you. He washes you. He loves you. But but you have to see this. This is just your flesh and the devil consorting to against the will of God for your life. And it's going to keep you and stifle you and rob you from fulfilling your calling. So but but, you know, God allows you. He tells you all things are permissible. But, but it's not going to be beneficial. And in the long, that corruption is going to tax you and the devil's going to destroy your life. And he even may kill you. You see, that, that's good Christian counsel. And he loves you. You know, and you should bask in his love. Well, I just keep falling into it. Yeah, but the more time you spend in his word, the more time you spend in prayer, the more you come around the right environment. See, that's another part. You can't be in that environment and think you're going to thrive and bear the fruits of the spirit, right? You can't have a poverty mentality and think you're going to, you're going to bear the fruits of financial abundance. 
you can't you can't hang around with people who think you know that that god's making them sick and this is punishment and and you know these are the consequences of your past you can't hang around those kind of mentalities look at which is this this other part let me read you these couple of verses i'm gonna tell you because the bible teaches all kinds of different things that a lot of people let, let me read you this verse Colossians uh, 3.12 tells you, put on as the called of God. Put on again, a heart of mercy. Put on the love of God. Bowels of mercy, tenderness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance. Put on all these things. What does Ephesians 6 tell you? Come on now. Put on the armor. So what happens when people are depressed, discouraged, defeated? Did they put on the armor? To take the sword of the spirit. Fight the good fight of faith. A lot of people think Christianity is just something you do. You just check in and casually sit by and everything works out hunky-dory for you. And if it don't work out, you blame God and go, this is God's will. You get what I'm saying? Look, no, I don't think so. It doesn't work like that. When things aren't working, it's because you and I aren't doing the word. When we do, thanks be on to God who always causes us to triumph. I didn't say you weren't going to go through some battles and challenges and trials, but he says, thanks be unto God who always causes you to triumph, though you walk through the valley of shadow. A lot of Christians, because they're inactive and unengaged, sit back and they're just kind of, it's kind of like spinning a wheel for lottery. They spin it. And if it hits, they go, praise God. If they spin it and it's negative, they go, the Lord is just helping me here to become a better Christian through all this discipline and uh, develop my character and all that. It's because they're inactive. They're not doers of the word. Do you understand? They're not in an active role of laying hold on what God has for them. Amen. So let's look at, let's look at this uh, uh, Ephesians real quick. And then I'm going to hit up these other aspects, just a couple little points to look at that you and I know, but, we got to be reminded of these things because many times you come under attack and you just kind of thinking, oh, you know, I'll just, this will pass tomorrow. And sometimes it doesn't pass. How many, you know, you remember Goliath? Goliath came out when? Help me out. Goliath came out against the children of Israel. I, I don't have time to go back. You also know the story. He came out against the children of Israel, right? And then what did he do? He what? He was mocked him. But what did he, he came out, mocked him. Then what did he do? He, he went back to his camp. And then the next day he came out and they were thinking, oh, he's gone. You, you get my point? <laughs> he went out, mocked him and challenged him and then went back to doing what he was doing. And they probably thought, hey, man, it's all good. He went away. Uh, I just want this to go away. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to engage. And then he came out again every day and came out and out and out and it wouldn't go away. And that's how the devil is. There are certain things in your life that will not go away. You can cry to God. You can complain to him. You can feel sorry. You can murmur. You can tell your best friend. You can even tell your crazy four friends. There's certain things that will never change or go away until you begin to impose the will of God against those things, until you begin to break those things down. Just like God told Jeremiah, put my word in your mouth to tear down, to deconstruct. Come on. I put to uproot. Come on, to destroy. There's certain things that will just linger. And the only way they're going to go is if you oppose them in faith. Right? You lift your voice against them. You say, you're not having that, devil. Sometimes it's very close where he just tries to work you to get you to compromise so that you just think that is normal. This is your lot in life. You know, this is how you'll always be. Ephesians 6. But the Lord gave you the answer. He says right here, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. If all this might and power is available to all these Christians, why are people so weak? If Think about this great resurrection power that is available to every Christian. Why are people weak? 
because they're not acting on the power. They're not doing it. They, they know it in their head, but it's not what you know. See, this is where a challenge and a trial really sets you apart. How many of you understand what I'm saying? It, when adversity shows up, how do you respond to that? Well, the Bible teaches you this. Here's some, here's some hallmarks to know that you're walking in the light of redemption. When a challenge shows up, do you still have joy? Are you still practicing love or do you get discombobulated, mean, frustrated, self-defeated, grumbling, whining? I mean, we don't like to use that word, but ultimately it's true. Complaining. That's one of the dangers for a Christian. Complaining. The woes is me's. See, if we find ourselves in those areas, then those are areas of fear that we've allowed in. We're not acting on what God gave us. We should be acknowledging every day. And that's why I've noticed a pattern in my life. The, the least I acknowledge, the less power is operative. If I don't acknowledge love, if I don't acknowledge the spirit of faith, then guess what? I'm more likely to default to my natural strength, my own intellect. You know what I mean? We have to make a choice to put on every day. Now, here's the other part. Let me just read you a couple of these verses, then we'll close. How about this one? Isaiah, Isaiah 52, 1 says, awake, put on your strength. How about if you felt weak? You just said, awake, David, awake, arise. Put on your strength. Put on the new man. Come on. And you. Yourself. <laughs> Riding the victory. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, you don't need this kind of friend that goes, you know, bro, it'll just be okay, man. Just, you know, time is a great healer. <laughs> you need a friend that says, bro, bro, you're more than a conqueror. Go slay that giant, brother. Begin to speak the word. Stop speaking that negative stuff. And how many of you know, the more you say something, it goes in your ears. I was sharing this with the person the other day, uh, yesterday, and I told him, the more you, you focus on something, the more you talk about it, it goes in your ears and it just zaps you. It just drains you and it just depletes you. The more you talk something that's contrary to God's will, it'll just drain you. And then people go, I just feel so low. You done coached yourself right into depression. Never allow your mouth to side with the world, the enemy, even your failure. Even if you failed, never side with your failure. Always side with the power, the blood, the love, the grace. The, you know, the dominion of God, never side with the world, never say, you know, you know, I'm struggling, I'm broke. Well, ain't that telling the truth? No, that's telling what you're experiencing. The truth is you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the new man. Here you go. He says, put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy soldier, which God supplies. See, it's not drawn from man that you'll be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies of the enemy. Come on now. The enemy got all kinds of stratagems. Here's the other one I want you to look at. Go to 1 Corinthians real quick. I mean, 2 Corinthians 6. Using that little thing we got up there. Maybe a couple more verses will close. 2 Corinthians. You can say, well, I know this. Look, I already told you in the pandemic. It ain't what you know, friend. I'm tired of hearing Christians tell me, I know this, and I don't care what you know. I saw you locked down, shut down, masked down, this, that, and the other. I don't want to hear it. I want to see doers. I don't want to hear it. I don't care if you got a platform in a mega church. You shut your mega church. It doesn't matter what you say to me until you get up there and say, look, I was preaching healing for 20 years. I closed my mega church down. Until you get up on that platform, like I heard that man at the men's retreat say, look, man, I bought in all that. I was wrong. I had to repent before God. Until you do that publicly, I can't believe you're teaching on healing no more. Because you didn't even practice it yourself. That's how I see it. Just theology up in my brain. You understand? I'm not, I'm not up in the just information up here in the head. I, I, I'm in here to fight in a good fight of faith. I want to live the life that this Bible tells me I can live. That the word tells me I can. I want to. I want to live. I want to see some Red Seas part, some lions' mouth stopped. You know, I ain't got time for a theology lesson. That has never been my hallmark. You know, to have a theology lesson, it, it must be applicable. Amen. 
got to be applicable. And it's got to prove itself out. Otherwise, I'm not doing it right. There's something wrong. That's how you and I should be. I believe we're getting that way. But I'm saying there's a lot of people in Christianity that aren't, friend. They're not. And that's scary because, you know, we're part of a larger body in the world. Here you go right here. Um, in uh, 2 Corinthians. Here you go. Here you go. 2 Corinthians 6. I'll give you a couple of verses. 2 Corinthians 6. Verse 16. What agreement can there be between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, dwelt among them and with them. I will dwell among them and, and be with them and walk in them. I'll be there. God will be come out from among them. Separate yourself. Do you hear me? Separate yourself. I noticed one thing, and I didn't even say anything. At work this week, this guy, he noticed right away. He brought up. He said, you don't cuss. I was like, he just noticed. I wasn't try not trying to cuss. It's just like, you know, and I've had my little episodes. I mean, I, I, I can't tell, you know. I can't tell you that, you know, I haven't said something, stubbed my toe and said something I shouldn't at some point, but I always repented of it. I don't have a, I don't have a lifestyle of foul language though, but he noticed that, you know, and that's, that's not like, Hey, great. I mean, I wish he'd notice something more like, Hey bro, you're loving. <laughs> that would be a compliment just to tell somebody, Hey, you don't cuss. That's not a compliment to me. Really. That's just somebody acknowledging something, you know, they just see a difference in, you know, you want them to say, Hey brother, you're generous. Hey, you're kind, man. Hey, you know, you're, you're, you're patient, man. Hey, you're a good worker or, uh, you know, you're a good forget, you know, that's a compliment when someone sees that and says, man, you know, so anyway, anyway, he says, come out from among them, unbelievers, separate yourself, social distance yourself from their work, says the Lord. I'll receive you. I'll be a father. Now, look at this. I want to give you a couple other verses real quick. Look at, look at, look at, here's a good example. Um, Genesis 13. You remember when Lot and Abraham's herdmen had a battle? Come on now. So don't think you can go out there and mingle with the world. A lot of Christians, unless you're bringing them to Jesus. See, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just winning them to the Lord. No, you ain't. You're more influenced by them than, than they are by you. A lot of people like that. And seeker sensitive garbage. If you ain't bringing them to Christ and you're conforming more to them, then I guarantee you, you're not doing the will of the Lord. You're not fishing. Because the reality is, is you're supposed to be amongst, there's not a problem going to your boss's house who's a hardcore sinner and drinker. If you're sharing Jesus, they know who you are and you're not an undercover Christian. You get my point? You're not hiding out like, mm. you, they need to know who you are around come out from among them come out from that you know come out from that fear that controls you know the enemy tries to control you and i to keep your mouth shut right that's what he's saying come out man he's not just talking about their sinful deeds but look at abraham in genesis 13 he says it's not the whole land separate yourself that and now we can read later on in first Corinthians. it doesn't mean you cut yourself off from the world that's foolishness but separate your mentality, separate your attitude, separate the way you do things, handle things, steward things. Amen. Separate it. It's like I told this guy at work this week, he said, brother, I ain't going to be the fastest, but I guarantee you this is going to be done right. No, no, it's true. It's done right. And there ain't no mistakes. That's it. You know why? Because I ain't in here drunk. I ain't in here hungover. I ain't in here messed up. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know how many hours of work are lost from people making so many mistakes at work because they're hungover, they're drunk, they're worn out, they're stressed out because of their marriage, they're stressed out because of their children. They, they didn't pray and meditate and, and they didn't calibrate themselves before they came into the job. They brought their events from their home into their work. So now they're actually hindering their, they're being a hindrance to their employer. Amen? Now I'm not saying that stuff doesn't happen. Happen. Here you go. Let me read you this one in uh, this other one real quick. And um, the Lord even says it. Keep yourself. 
for you did separate them first kings from among the people to be your inheritance. Even God says, keep yourself separate. How many of you know what we're talking about here is in mentality, in attitude, right? Always with an agenda, always with a plan to fish them. Don't let them fish you. Amen. Don't let the devil fish you and make you compromise and enslave you right into the world system. Don't be caught up even now with all the, the, the bigotry, the, the media garbage about racism everywhere. It's all trash. The reality is if you're a believer, go read Colossians 3, 12, 13, and 14 and Colossians 3, 11. There ain't no Scythian, Barbithian, free, bond. Christ is all in and all. So if you're walking according to Christ, you're not walking according to the flesh. You don't see no color. You don't see those differences. There's a lot of Christians that do. Amen. And the last one, Revelation 1. Here it is. You guys are ready to roll. But don't worry, this will uh, impart them to you. Revelation 1 5. Washing, hygiene. Stay under the blood. Amen. How many of you take some sort of communion on a frequent basis? Oh. Revelation 1, 5, and from Jesus, the faithful, trustworthy witness, firstborn of the dead, first to be brought back, prince and ruler, unto him who ever loves us and loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood. A continual washing of the blood. Keep proper hygiene spiritually. If you never acknowledge the blood during the week, then debris is settling in upon your mind, your emotions, your life. There should be a... a a continuous application of the blood of Jesus in your life. Amen. A continual acknowledgement of it that cleanses you. You're appropriating it everywhere in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was thinking of this last verse. I'm not going to read it because I don't have it. But it says, put on. And it says, love. Wear love. Wear it. And one translation said, it's your all-purpose garment. Now, you just think of this in closing. Every aspect of your day is filled with some element of love. Love meaning love takes no account of the evil done. So you see the enemy trying to work a seed into your heart of offense. So love says, my account is closed. I'm not letting you make an investment there. You get it? Or you're not taking out something. So all day long, you have all day to practice love, especially around people. You, every day, you got to practice love. There's the defensive side of love and the offensive side. You have to practice that every day. So nobody has perfected it. I guarantee you. Now, a lot of times people don't really see the, the depth of love, what it means. They just think of love as like, give me a hug, kind of, I love you. That's an aspect of love. That's, that's, that's an aspect of love. But true love is my accounts closed to the devil. Because people do things to offend you. They say things. They do things. They do it unintentionally. They do it intentionally. But the devil always tell you that, that they're doing it intentionally. But they're not. People just don't know. Like this guy, you know, you let somebody pass. You pull up to a stop sign and you, you wave them on and they never even acknowledge you. They just, they don't even go like, thank you. That's where we live today. Dullness and insensitivity. Now, you're not expecting that. How many of you understand? But it's just nice if, 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 if I hold the door for Sunette and Sunette's walking out and I hold the door and she says, hey, thank you. Appreciate that. Or does she just walk out and just be like entitled, like selfish and self-centered and entitled like I'm God's gift to the earth. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. This message was brought to you by Living Water Fellowship San Francisco. You can connect with us on Facebook or email us at sflivingwater.com.